Let's go ahead and take another call here. Uh, we are talking to Queer, who is calling in from Illinois. Queer, you are live on Truth Wanted. What's up? Hey, it's actually Queer Atheist. I think the, the screener might have uh, forgot the atheist part. Oh, um, they, but, they, uh, that's okay. All, queer Atheist. Yes, you're live. What's up? First of all, there's a there's a big discrepancy on Discord about whether or not pizza actually or a pineapple belongs on pizza. I just thought you should know that uh that I, listen mass, massive I understand debate. that the living have opinions, but the dead have spoken <laughs> tonight. Okay. And I'm taking the I'm just a uh, journalist right. for the, the those who have moved on and I'm telling them what they are saying. So if they got a problem, they gotta talk to some spirits and get their own spirit board. Because I I'm just I'm laying down what they're putting down. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, you can continue. This is some spirit fake news we have going spirit on. Fake news? Um, There's spirit. This is look. Yeah. This is legit. This is the most legit spirit board I've ever seen. I don't know about you. Okay. If, I anyone know, who I, wants to I question, really. I, anybody who I really wants to want question it. my mediumship, okay? They didn't go to medium school like I did. He's got the so three hands. Where's He's your good. credentials at? I got. <laughs> All three oh. hands. I mean, you need. thank God we have three hands, right? Anyway, I know that, like, how like we, we all should. Hands on that. How do we get our hands on that spirit board? Because I would love that. I um, think we're gonna put this is... thing up as as in in the library once the library is open again, because this thing is just really really cool. Um, I, and again, it's got all the show logos on it. I would love. I don't know what we're gonna do with it. So this was handmade again by by one of our crew members. So it's very very cool. But anyway, um, queer atheist, what what do you got for us tonight? Well, so I wanted to ask about uh, uh, spooky apologetics. Um, okay. And uh, uh, definitely presuppositionalism, presuppositionalism, um, because I feel like it's 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 a really circular topic that gets brought up. Um, and just as an aside, uh, I was the one who sent you a message on uh, Twitter or sent a Twitter uh, tweet out saying that I had a, a, a giant crush on you and uh, Eric Murphy. Oh. So um, okay, I didn't remember so that tweet. That was, thank you for thank you for saying that. Yeah, yeah, that was me. So uh, so beware if I ever come to Texas. Uh, but uh, but yeah, all right. <laughs> I think that's a threat. I'm not entirely sure, but I'll, I'm just going to roll with it. We'll, we'll keep no, going. no, no, it's not a threat. It's not a threat. I'm just saying, you know, uh, I might take you off for tequila. Um, so presuppositionalism is, is, really, uh, is, is, is really hard for me to debate because it's so circular. Um, and I was wondering if you had, from your street epistemology days, any, uh, any idea about the best way to kind of have a discussion about that without it turning circular and being so frustrating. Yeah, I think the thing with um, people who use these kinds of apologetics is, you know, I, I, I want to take away the arguments from the person here for a second, because sure. I think it's easy for us to ascribe motive to people who use these kinds of arguments. And for the most part, when people kind of talking about it, like, I agree, I think there are people who want to force you into a script for the most part, at least in my experience, and, and, and who just want to kind of make you look foolish. But like besides this group of people, besides this group of people who are really pushing these apologetics, to the vast majority of people, I don't think that they're really convinced. I really think it's a small group of people. So like I, I and, and all that to say is like I don't think you have to worry about that on a day to day with people. It's only going to be these like certain kinds of apologists. And if it's only going to be these certain kinds of apologists, then I'm all right with that because my mission personally is to try to talk to as many people as I can, not just this small group who um really is you know almost a novelty when it comes to apologetics more so than any real you know um there's not, not a lot of philosophical legwork being done with these kinds of arguments in case you're not familiar with that i'm sure most people who are listening are familiar it's kind of this idea that you, you're using these arguments to support god because you can only know things through god or um you know god um gives us specific knowledge and we have that knowledge because of god. You know, there's different variations of this uh but but they all kind of run the same with these things um i think matt dillahunt he actually um has talked about this at length and i think his kind of talks on it are really good so i would refer people to go see what he said about it 
Um, I don't know if I could add much more than to say, um, when you're talking with people, you want to make sure that they're honest, especially if you're talking about to people from a street epistemology point of view. And people who are honest with themselves are usually going to be the first to say that they can't always be 100% sure of something being true. And if they do have that confidence, then they should be able to back up the reasoning for that confidence. And, you know, somebody convinced by their own reasoning that poor, I mean, and after all the conversations people have with them, I'm not sure that one extra person is going to really make the difference. You know what I'm saying? But the average person who's really honest with themselves and knows their limits about their knowledge and knows like, hey, there's only so much I can be certain about and there's only so much an argument can really take me, will be able to say, yes, there's always going to be some unknowns there. But I personally don't trust anybody that says they know for 100% certainty about anything. Um, but that that's kind of my commentary on the whole, um, you know, the, the, those kinds of apologetics. Puck, Aaron, you guys have any thoughts on that? Aaron, what you got? Um, I, have, I haven't dealt with too many uh, presuppositionalist uh, apologists yet, but so far in my, in my limited experience, I find that obviously um, trying to get them to break out of their script a little bit because it seems like most of them do have a script that they're going with when they're talking to you. Um, and there's also usually a heavy emphasis on like these big philosophical ideas. And so for me, I, I've, I've had some success just trying to ask them, like, can you tell me more about your specific theism? And because I, yeah. I don't know, like personally, like I, we can talk about a lot of, of the philosophical arguments and you can get to deism and, um, and that's kind of fine, I guess. And th th that was not as consequential as some of the other ones. So I like to try to get them to break go back into what is their specific theism if they're a christian i try to get them to talk about jesus and tell them why they believe in specifically jesus or the um the events that happened around his story or if it's like a somebody who is a muslim i'll get them to ask about you know the the story of muhammad and more about that um mostly i think it just because it kind of breaks them back from the script and then what dan was saying earlier too about um trying to uh like connect with them on like their honesty level. I've asked an, I've asked a presuppositional presuppositionalist if they thought that I was an honest person and they they couldn't really answer that before too. So uh, getting through to those kind of things in the communication sometimes can kind of help with that too. Yeah, in, in my experience, presupposition is is the presuppositional apologist is done performatively. It's yeah. done as a, a, a display because what they want to do is they want to get they want it on camera that an atheist says, you know, trips up or does something. So one of the best ways to deal with it is to just say, hey, you know what? I don't like having these conversations in like Facebook Messenger chat or, or Facebook comments. Let's go have a private chat. Just you and me. Let's talk this out. Nine out of 10 times, they just disappear right there because they, they know they want to do it performatively. The other side of that is the presuppositional apologetic is designed to be given from the front foot, right? You're you're leading, you're aggressive with it, and you're always poking holes in your, your opponent. That's how they make their case. And yeah. if you somehow are able to say, no, let's, let's not talk about it, because I can be wrong and it doesn't mean you're right. So forget about me, present your case, and let's talk only about your case, and then to be able to do a, a, a an internal critique. Um, and then That's I would true. also be remiss if I didn't mention the good friend of the channel, Paula Gia, has a couple of interesting videos about knowledge without God and truth without God that make it so even if there uh, even if there is no God, it is still possible to have truth yeah. and knowledge. So P Puck has made a great point here in that yeah. when you're doing a street epistemology approach, it's really not about what you believe, right? Like mm -hmm. the person asks the question it is really about them and a lot of presuppositional apologetics their whole thing is trying to make you look dumb right they're trying to make you seem like the rational person but when you're coming at that you know uh, topic from an sc angle you get to say well i want to know what you think i right. really want to know how you got to that conclusion and, and i want to see if i can come to that conclusion too using that same reasoning or what kind of questions i would come up with um and and you know it should be a natural conversation from there um, I, I don't really have a lot of stuff in the back of my pocket if I'm talking to a presuppositionalist because I really I, I, I just want to know how they got there themselves because I, I can't seem to get there. I, I, I can't follow where they lead, so to speak. So uh, it, it, it is kind of different. But anyway, that's that's really all the time we've got for this particular call. A thank you, queer atheist, for um, calling in on that topic. I agree with you. Presuppositional apologetics is pretty spooky. So I think it does fit the theme for tonight as far as our, you know, spooky, spooky stuff happening here.